In a world where millions are starving, America has become the breadbasket as well as the arsenal of democracy. Our farmlands and ranges must produce more food than ever before to supply our own needs and to help our fighting allies. In spite of record-breaking farm production, food requirements are mounting even faster, or American food is being used to defeat the Axis and shorten the war. Americans not in the armed forces will get less of the common foods to which they are accustomed. But by rationing, by sharing what we have, and by using our food supply wisely, our nation at war can still support a healthy, active people. Today, in the great human laboratory of England, the principles of nutrition are being conclusively proven. The subject of this great wartime experiment in food are not white mice or guinea pigs, but human beings fighting for their lives. The average English family has learned the value of food through years of wartime scarcity. Cheese and eggs have been rationed, and the supply of butter is limited to two ounces a week. But the English have learned to substitute. Vitamin preparations developed in the laboratory are added to some foods, such as margarine, to enrich the vitamin content. Foods such as the English wheatmeal loaf, dried peas, beans, and cereals have been recognized as nerve conditioners at a time when iron nerves are needed most. Vitamin B foods supply physical energy not only for those in combat duties, but also for English industrial workers who are turning out the weapons of war with the enemy only 20 miles away. Desk workers, also under strain, need energy food too. Vitamin D foods such as margarine, herring, and sardines are widely used by adults in England. Cod liver oil and milk are distributed in special rations for children only. Imported fruits and vegetables are seldom seen in English markets, but fresh vegetables are grown in victory gardens everywhere. Old and young alike are mobilized for the job, so that the home production of food in Britain has almost doubled. Since the outbreak of the war, six million additional acres of English soil have been put under cultivation. No patch is too small to start growing. Soldiers, when off duty, tend their own little plots in the shadow of their guns. For them, food is ammunition. A part of the food grown in English victory gardens is contributed to community kitchens where balanced, nutritious meals are prepared for all. Because they are learning to use their food supply carefully, many people of Britain are better fed today than ever before. We in the United States have not had our food supplies bombed, burned, or torpedoed. Yet, many Americans are starving not for lack of food, but because of poor eating habits. In this restaurant, patrons could order nutritious food, but too many don't. Same today, miss? Yeah, I guess so. Draw one, two sinkers. Too many people eat the same kind of foods every day. Eat without pleasure, without variety, as a matter of routine. Quick lunches are the order of the day, and most of these are inadequate. Malnutrition, resulting from habitual poor diet, that's the strength of American manpower. Inefficiency results. In many cases, production has been slowed down because of layoffs and illness among workers who lack the physical stamina that good food can build. A large proportion of defense workers suffer from unsuspected physical defects associated directly or indirectly with malnutrition. The strain of long, hard hours of work has increased the number of breakdowns. In Army induction centers all over the nation, examining doctors found rejectees starved for the foods to give them the steady nerve, the clear eye, the strength of bone and muscle to fight and win a war. Today, through the work of government and other agencies, millions of American workers are learning the simple facts of proper diet in a nationwide nutrition program. Dr. Thomas Parent, Surgeon General of the United States Public Health Service. Good nutrition and good health are inseparable. No one can do his full part in the war effort without good health. Realizing this fact, 
government agencies have joined in a national nutrition program and are working with your state, county, and city nutrition committees in their attack on local nutrition problems. You can help just by helping yourself to the right food. Make a real effort to choose a nutritious diet every day. To do this, every citizen should have a down-to-earth working knowledge of modern nutrition. Resolve now to study the daily nutritive requirements recommended by the National Nutrition Program. Study, too, the nutritive values of the many foods now available. You can be well nourished by planning your daily diet carefully, by using wisely the many nutritious, unrationed foods, and by using your full share of rationed foods. Every one of us must do this, for today we have no choice. War demands that no one waste food. War demands that we use the good foods available to us to build an armor of health. Appetite alone is not a safe guide to good nutrition. To teach the simple facts of good eating, public nutrition classes have been set up in churches, schools, and factories. With wise planning, good meals can be had at low cost. American women are learning how to prepare food with greatest economy, with least waste of vitamin content, and how to substitute the foods we have for the foods we can't get. Above all, experts on food emphasize the importance of balanced diet, in which variety is essential. Every American worker should have three square meals each day, including foods such as milk and foods made with milk, eggs or other protein foods, and vitamin B foods such as cereal and whole wheat or enriched white bread. A good breakfast is important, but on the job, the worker's lunch pail must supply the necessary energy for the rest of the working day. Sandwiches of meat, or peanut butter can be made more appetizing if fresh lettuce is included. Fresh fruits are valuable additions to the workers' noonday meal. In the evening, chicken, fish, liver, or sweetbreads are excellent main dishes with green leafy salad and cooked vegetables such as peas or carrots. Milk, fruit, and vegetables are basic protective foods for Americans working longer, harder hours in offices and factories. To keep up health and morale, many war plants have set up central food kitchens to prepare appetizing, nutritious meals for the men who build the ships and make the guns. Whole wheat and enriched white bread are used in sandwiches with cheese, peanut butter, and different kinds of meat. The average worker needs twice as much green vegetables and fruits as he now consumes. So on the menu of most kitchens are vegetables such as carrots, spinach, cauliflower, and lima beans, and other inexpensive and often overlooked dishes such as squash, parsnips, and hot soups and stews, rich in many food essentials. Good foods can increase the worker's efficiency on the job. Reduce accidents, waste, and absenteeism due to inadequate diet. The men of our armed forces eat one-fourth more food than they did in civilian life. And in the same way, workers transferring to war jobs from less strenuous work need better food and more of it. At work or at home, in restaurants and cafeterias, in their selection of foods, American workers choose the way to good or to poor health, build or undermine the strength of our nation. Eventual victory in this war may depend on what we eat. And given the national will to do it, we can build here in America a tougher, more vigorous nation, a nation with better morale and greater strength of mind than the world has ever known. Food can build a new America.